Coming up on the Delaware Way, why are primary care doctors leaving the state? Senator Brian Townsend is here to explain. And new voting machines are coming. This is the Delaware Way. Welcome to the Delaware Way. I'm Larry Menti. There is a crisis in the state right now about medical care professionals leaving. Here to talk about that is Senator Brian Townsend from the uh, 11th District, uh, which is Newark South for Newark, the most a part. Bit of bear. Yeah. Tell me about this, the, the crisis. Why, why are doctors leaving? Well, first, thank you very much for having me on again, Larry. Sure. Um, it, it, was, it was a surprise to many people. I guess for, for, for doctors and for primary care providers like nurses and, and physicians assistants, they've known for a few years how bad it was getting, but it really came to the fore earlier this year in, in spring of 2018. They're leaving because their reimbursement rates are so low. It's among the lowest in the country. A, a, a primary care provider provides a service to a patient, and the amount of money they get paid to do that is so much lower than most of the other places. The um, reimbursement rates from insurance companies? Yes, yeah. And so... Um, well, and it's we, better in other states? Yes, Delaware is one of the lowest. So you have doctors who are retiring early because they just can't make the finances work anymore. You have doctors who are moving to other states to practice there. You have doctors, um, some of them are going to what's called concierge practices where they basically charge you as a patient like an annual membership fee. Uh, on top of reimbursements that they're going to get through the insurance pro process. So different doctors have approached this in different ways, but it's resulted in fewer and fewer people in Delaware having access to primary care. And if it hasn't happened to, to somebody yet, they might not know about it. Um, but any, every time a doctor closes up shop, it could be 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 patients that have to then scramble and find a provider. When you're talking about primary care, you're talking about general practitioners for the general, most part. Both physicians, nurse practitioners, physician's assistants, anyone who either is employed within a primary care practice practice, including with a doctor or some nurse practitioners, for example, have their own practices. But yes. Several states have gone through this type of crisis in the past. In the past, it's always been about malpractice insurance, that the malpractice insurance rates in a state were so high that it was forcing people to leave. This is, again, a problem with the insurance companies and, and what they're paying. Is that, a, you, you made a face when I said that. Am I putting the blame in the wrong area? Uh, we're, we're currently have in, in, in public discussions, not private discussions, public discussions about how to fix this, and it's certainly there's a lot of a lot of influence and decision making authority on the insurance side. Patients just know that they pay their premiums, they pay their deductibles, they pay their copays. They want good care. It, the, our, you know, America's health insurance system, Delaware included, can be so complicated to navigate. At the end of the day, the question is why are Delaware rates so much lower, um, and and what can we do to make primary care be a, 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 an area we spend more money on? Because it saves money. I mean, if you spend money on primary care, you save a lot of money by avoiding complicated medical issues in the first place. Uh, I know it's sometimes not an easy question to answer, but for somebody that loses their doctor or loses their primary care mm -hmm. uh, physician or office, they want to know the answer, who's to blame? Who's, who's at fault? Well, a lot of times right now, the, as, as, from my stories I've heard about it, uh, patients are, are initially frustrated their doctor's closing, but often the doctor will communicate some reason for it, uh, and the patient just quickly jumps to the idea of, well, I've got to find somebody else then. So they're not looking, I mean, it's a forest and trees issue, right? If you're, if you're focused on the tree, as you should be, to make sure you have your, a new primary care doctor, uh, you're not necessarily stepping back and realizing how bad the forest is, and that includes policymakers, politicians, even some of the doctors in the community. No one, I don't think people realize the kind of crisis we are in until it had just reached that point where you couldn't you couldn't help but smell the smoke in the forest. You, you know, unlike, you normally don't do this. You seem to be dancing around the, I'm asking, is it the insurance company? Is it the state? Is it, who, who is to blame for this? I, I think it's, I think in Delaware it is the result of it being a very small state with, you know, a lot of concentration in the insurance side, some concentration on the hospital side, uh, and, and, and when everyone focuses, as we're an unhealthy community in so many ways, when you focus on the specialist side, stuff, it's very easy to forget the primary care providers. And so over time, it has just resulted in this. I do think the insurance side um, has a, a major role to play here in, in agreeing to change or, or ba basically having change happen. And, and the state legislation, which we passed earlier this year, which mandated that primary care providers in Delaware will receive at least Medicare rates. Uh, you know, they have to at least get Medicare rates. Um, we need to go beyond that, I think, we as well. We called that a Band-Aid when I first yeah, talked to it's you about Yeah, it's more of like a Band-Aid at this point. It, 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 and people around the country, when they heard that Delaware was below Medicare rates, 
they were like, wait a minute, what? Are you Really? Are you sure about that? Are you, are you sure you have that right? Because they just stunned them. Other states don't have this problem. Then when you make them uh, get reimbursed more, do, do premiums go up? Well, the, the, uh, the point would be that if you're getting primary care, then you are avoiding the more serious illnesses, in many instances, more serious illnesses that happen later, which costs the system a whole lot more. It really ends up going to the issue of health and wellness. Like, we're not anywhere near as healthy a country or a state as we should be for how much money we pay into the system. And part of the problem is because we don't pay the right places as a general matter. Like if you need a specialist for a knee replacement, you got to get your knee replaced. But in terms of day-to-day -day wellness, you really need to have a sense of primary care providers and general practitioners to help keep you well in the first place. Um, diabetes is a great example. Obesity is another example. Just health and wellness that will help save a whole lot of money and frustration and tragedy later on with other kinds of health conditions. Do you have any, uh, do you have any doubts that this problem is going to be fixed? It has to be fixed, right? Well, so the meaningful change that goes into effect January 1st, 2019 will help with the reimbursement rates that providers do get for primary care. That will help, uh, but it's not enough. And I do, we have active conversations right now in a public task force about what more we can do. We're listening to states like Rhode Island and Connecticut that have really helped strengthen their primary care systems in recent years. So we are learning as qu legislators as quickly as we can about this issue to try to find a solution. I, I am I'm hopeful. There's a lot of compelling testimony from primary care providers earlier this year in the legislative process, and clearly uh, the momentum is in direction of really fixing this issue in Delaware. I, I want to talk about something else very quickly, and that is the the midterm election coming up, mm -hmm. and the and, and all elections in the future. Because you there was an article recently about you were concerned about access to the ballots. I wrote an op-ed recently. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of people on the Republican side were, were concerned about how their own primary turned out in terms of which candidate won. And because Scott Walker won the primary against, to against run Lee for Murphy. Congress. Yes, run for Congress. He's a Republican nominee. The party has disavowed him. It's it's. And there were people who were talking about, well, can the the, the you know the election can those results be real? And I think the reality is is that those results are real. There's a whole. If you're concerned about elections, there's a whole host of other issues, some nationwide, some some in Delaware that you should be focused on in terms of making sure as many people can get to the ballot as possible. And, and the reality is this conversation nationally the past few years, this idea that there's you know, all these kinds of fraudulent voting or that illegal immigrants, undocumented immigrants are somehow voting, it just, that's largely false. It truly, truly is largely false. The reality is, is you've had people purged from voter rolls, you have a reduction in number of polling places in certain areas. Delaware is not really that bad in that regard. Delaware's challenge is that we're one of the few states that have absolutely no way to go back and, and validate all an audit an election. We're changing that because we're getting new voting machines, not in time for 2018, but in time for 2020. We're going to roll them out in 2019, then some small elections, school board elections, test them out and have them ready to go in 2020. New voting machines that do have a paper trail so that you can actually count the votes later. Knock on wood, we don't have any problems in 2018 because there's no way uh, to actually audit that. We had somebody from Common Cause here just a little while ago that was talking about exactly what you're talking mm -hmm. about. But I would love to have you back to talk about uh, the voter fraud and the access to the ballots because I did read your op-ed. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there's pushback from the other side on almost everything you were talking about. So I'd love to have the debate, which we, we oh, often do. Yeah, we'd love to. We'd love to. And, and, and I'll be very clear, too. It's not just government policies. Obviously, a lot of people could go vote and don't. So I'm not at all saying that these policies are, are, are the only barrier uh, to, to more robust voting results. It also needs to be people making use of that right that has been fought for and bled for and died for. Um, so there is that individual accountability that needs to be part of it too. But I'd love to come on anytime, Larry. All right, wonderful. Well, amen to what you just said. Thank you so much. I always appreciate you coming here. Senator yes. Brian Townsend from the 11th Senatorial District in Delaware. When we come back, we'll be talking with Common Cause about those new voting machines when the Delaware Way continues.